guys, and thank you guys for jumping into the nook. We are here for another reading vlog. So it's Sunday, and I usually start my reading vlogs on Mondays, or I try to, but I actually just finished doing a two-week reading vlog, and it ended today, and so I thought I might as well just start the next one since I'm still in a reading mood and probably going to pick up another book today. So um, before I had forgot to mention in the previous reading vlog that I'm actually partaking in the Thousand Door Readathon that um, is hosted by three lovely um, booktubers that I'm going to put somewhere here on the screen and I'll leave their info as well as the info for the readathon down below in the description box. Um, so I was really excited because I thought that this was a really interesting premise for a readathon. Essentially, you pick one of the three creators' videos and it gives you the first prompt. And then based off the first prompt, you pick your book. And then based on how the book ended out for you, like if it was a DNF, it was one or two stars, three or four, or if it was a five star, then that led to another door. And then that one led to another um, booktuber and they gave you a new prompt. And so you had to follow through with five different prompts to get to the end of the readathon. But there are so many different um, options and choices and routes you can take. So it's kind of like a choose your own adventure readathon, which I thought was really cool. So um, I forgot to mention in the previous reading vlog that I was doing this readathon, and so the first three books that I read were actually based off the first three prompts. And so for my first book, I read or I tried to read Where Dreams Descend, and the prompt for that was Breaking Bad, and so pretty much all of these prompts are very liberal. You can kind of take your own interpretation for it. And so for Breaking Bad, I was thinking about how it has to do with drugs and making drugs and kind of like how you are when you're on drugs where you're not really kind of like that lucid um, and you're not really thinking that straight sometimes. And so Where Dreams Descend is supposed to be kind of this like magical performative thing full of illusions. And so I thought that that would fit the prompt pretty well for that. And as you guys know from last week's reading vlog, I ended up DNFing this book. Um, I tried it out for, I believe, like 10% or something like that, but I just wasn't feeling it, so I DNF'd it. And then I chose the DNF option for the readathon. Prompt number two led me to um, picking chaos. And so anything having to do with chaos. And so I thought about it and I wanted to switch over to just a different genre, specifically contemporary. And I ended up picking Darius the Great Deserves Better. So this is the sequel to Darius the Great is Not Okay. And I really enjoyed the first book and loved the second book. It was so fun and I ended up giving it a five stars. Um, the reason why I picked it for the chaos prompt was because um, Darius has depression and there's a lot of mental health representation in this book and so it kind of shows how he goes through depressive episodes and how it tends to be a little chaotic, his emotions during these depressive episodes. And so that's the reason why I chose that book to match that prompt. And then because it ended up being a five stars, it led me to another prompt. So the third prompt had to do with Marvel. And so there were different ways you could interpret this. Um, one of the ways was sci-fi, and I was thinking sci-fi and superheroes. And so the perfect book that ended up fitting for that was the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin, because it has to do with these people called Origins who have these Earth abilities and so they kind of have this superhero power and this is an adult sci-fi fantasy book and so it fit the prompt really really well and I ended up giving this one a five stars is definitely going to be one of my new favorite books I think of all time um, I really enjoyed this one and so because I gave it a five stars we're moving on to prompt number four and book number four so prompt number four led me to pick a book that had like so-so 
reviews so they could have been mixed it could have been some positive and negative just any kind of books that you're a little bit hesitant about so um, I was looking at some of the books that I had planned to read next one of them being the Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin, which is the second book in the fifth season trilogy, but this one has amazing reviews, and so there's really not a lot of people who don't like this book, so couldn't read this one next, even though I kind of wanted to. And then there were some other audiobooks that I had ready to borrow on Libby, but then I checked their ratings on Goodreads, and all of them had pretty good ratings. Like, they all had either like 3.9, 4 to 4.1, and those are really good ratings. On Goodreads. So I was like, these books aren't that polarizing either. And so I decided to do something that I probably will end up regretting, and that is I decided to pick the lowest rated physical book I own but haven't read on my Goodreads. And that led me to this, which is Blood Rose Rebellion by Rosalind Eves. So this book it probably should look familiar because it ended up on my video for um, these books will self-destruct in one year. And so in that video concept, I had a bunch of books that have been sitting on my shelves and I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to get to them or not, but I've given myself a one-year time limit to read these books before they quote-unquote self-destruct, which means I have to unhaul them. And so this was one of the books on that list. Um, I bought this book about a year and a half ago. This was when I first started getting back into reading and this was actually before I discovered Goodreads and nowadays when I shop for books I look at the reviews on Goodreads, I look at the rating and I see how other people like it or not um, because it just kind of helps gauge if I'm gonna like it to be honest. And um, this was one of the books where I did old-fashioned shopping where I just went into a bookstore, looked at the cover, saw the cover was gorgeous, looked at the back, the summary seemed to fit with most YA fantasy books that I enjoy reading, and so I thought, why not? And I picked up the book. Later on, months later, when I was adding my books onto Goodreads, after I discovered it, I realized that this book had an extremely low rating. It has a 3.3 .3 on Goodreads, which is quite low. And um, looking at the reviews, it, it wasn't really encouraging because majority of the reviews were either DNFs, one or two stars, and then there were a couple of five stars like sprinkled in throughout the reviews, but I think a lot of the five stars were other authors that were giving their review for the book in like preparation for its promotion for its debut. And it's kind of like an unspoken thing between authors that whenever they review other books and they put the reviews on Goodreads, they're always positive. Like I never see authors give negative reviews or anything less than like five stars. So a lot of the five star reviews for this book felt kind of biased because I didn't really kind of trust if the authors were telling the truth because if you're a fellow author, you're not going to shit on a debut author's book. You're only going to say nice things. So that being said, I was really only looking at a bunch of DNFs, one stars, and two stars. But I was still determined to give this one a chance. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to start reading it and see how it goes. Um, and hopefully I can actually read through it. I'm hoping it's not a DNF because I've been DNFing a lot of books recently. and. I, I, wanna, I wanna actually get through my books, you know, especially since I had really high hopes for this one when I initially picked it out. So I'll let you guys know how that goes. Hi guys, so it's been a couple hours since I updated you guys and I have been reading Blood Rose Rebellion by Rosalind Eves and I also realized that I didn't even tell you guys what this book is about. So um, this is a historical fiction fantasy book, um, kind of like an alternate history book. And so it takes place in England and also in Hungary. And in this world, people are able to use magic, except there's something called the circle, which is kind of like the government for magic. And they're the ones who control who has access to their magic and how much, because there's been issues of people overusing the magic and then it turns deadly and so they kind of control and moderate it. 
um, except only the rich and wealthy and noble are able to access their magic and use it and the poor cannot. And so our main character, Anna, is 16 and she is from this noble family, except she's a little bit different in which she's considered barren. So on her ceremony when she was eight for her magic abilities, um, she didn't show any signs of magic and that's kind of you know, considered bad since she's supposed to have not only magic abilities, but great magic abilities since she's from this like high elite family. And so she's kind of ostracized from her society because she just doesn't fit in since she doesn't have magic, but she also doesn't fit in with the common people because of her nobility. And so she grows up with a bit of resentment towards her older sister, especially since her magic is really powerful. And so, um, yeah, the story starts off with her ruining her sister's, um, like, debutante ceremony, um, you know, announcing her womanhood. And, because, uh, of course, this is, like, late 1800s. And um, so then she gets shipped away to Hungary to live with her grandmother there um, to kind of, like, keep her hidden from society because she brought shame upon the family. And it turns out that she actually does have some kind of magic, but her magic is that she can break other people's spells. So when someone is performing magic and she's around them, their magic no longer works. And so it's almost like a curse. And so the circle it finds out about that and they want to find her um, because she could be considered a powerful tool for the rebellion. And the rebellion is essentially a group of radicals who want to um, abolish the magic system that they have so that it is fair for everybody to use magic, not just the rich and wealthy. So let me tell you about this book because I've read up to about 180 pages, so it's about like 40% of the book, and I'm gonna have to DNF it. Okay, so I didn't want to have to DNF this book because I feel like I'm DNFing so many books, but I really honestly tried. I was speed reading through this and it's just not that good. It It isn't. I'm like, I'm trying, but it's just, it's not working. Like, I think if I actually did finish reading this book, it probably would be a 1.5 stars. Yeah. So the main fault with this book is our protagonist, Anna. She is the definition of an unlikable main character to follow. Uh, I'm gonna switch positions because my arm was hurting holding up my camera, so moving to this position. So yeah, our main protagonist, Anna, is very unlikable. She is spoiled, she is very unaware of her surroundings, and um, it's just really hard following her point of view because she's just so unlikable. And then also there's just like instances of insta-love in this book, and then like a really weird kiss scene between her and her cousin, like her second cousin, and I'm like, this, and it literally so far has come out of nowhere, like, it, he's not even like another love interest, they just kissed, and I'm like, it, it really made no sense to the story. And then also, the writing style is really weird, because it's super, super slow pace, which is not a problem in the beginning, but it just continued to keep going slow pace like I almost got to halfway through this book and it was still really really slow and then the writing style is also weird because it's almost like has no emotional impact to it whatsoever like it's just so matter of fact and then on top of that it seems to have like a bunch of like big SAT kind of words in there like there's so much simpler ways to describe what's happening but there were so many like big complicated words that I had to look up because I just had no idea. And um, yeah, it just, it gave the whole writing style kind of like a presumptuous kind of feel to it. And I don't know if that was necessarily the author's intent or if she was just trying to have like an elevated writing style, but it just didn't work in her favor. So the writing style was just not that good. The pacing was really slow. The main character was intolerable and the only reason I continued reading was for the plot because the plot was interesting enough but it just got to the point where I'm just like 
speed reading through this so fast just to see what's happening that I just no longer cared. And so I'm DNFing this book. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the fifth and final prompt for the Thousand Door Readathon. It is um, halfway through November, so I'm actually finishing this a lot earlier than I thought I would. Um, and I've been looking at some of the other people who have been doing this readathon, and um, people who've been finishing like really early, like within the first week, have just gone back and they're doing their whole readathon all over again, but just going through different doors to go through different prompts, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that because then that's like five more books to finish for like a second round. I don't think I can read 10 books this month. Five to seven is more likely. So for my fifth and final prompt for Thousand Door Readathon, um, since I DNF this book and I am planning on unhauling it, um, the fifth and final prompt led me through the door to um, a book that's going to make me sad or make me cry. And I'm kind of happy for this prompt because that means that I get to pick up The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin, which is the second book in the fifth season trilogy. Because I don't know if it's going to make me cry, but it's definitely going to make me sad because there's so much depressing shit that happens in this world to these characters. So it's definitely going to make me sad. So I am excited because I do get to pick up the second book in the sequel. And then this was kind of a weird palette cleanser, even though it was like I went from a five star book to like a DNF one star book and going back to a five star prediction. But oh, well, well, we'll see how it goes. So I'll keep you guys updated. I'm not going to start on the obelisk gate today because I am going to focus on editing because I'm so behind on editing. So I'm going to edit for a couple more hours and then um, have to do some cleaning laundry since it is Sunday and prepare myself for the week. So yeah, I think that's probably it for my updates for today. But um, I will update you guys once I start the Obelisk Gate and I might start another audiobook at the same time. We'll see. So bye. Hi guys. So it is Wednesday afternoon. I'm giving you guys a little bit of a reading update. So I meant to start the Obelisk Gate this week and on Monday I ended up starting a new audiobook. And the reason why is because the week prior to that I had a bunch of audiobooks that came in through Libby and then because I was obsessively reading the fifth season I kept putting them to be delivered later and then they showed up again this week and so I figured um, I don't want to keep delaying all of these audiobooks that I've been waiting for for weeks. And so I decided that I would start listening to one on my commute to work and then read the obelisk gate in the evenings when I came home from work. But I started a new audiobook and I kind of got a little bit obsessed with it and so I kind of want to finish that first before I even begin obelisk gate. So the audiobook that I am currently listening to is Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. And so this is her new release. Um, this is actually my first time reading from this author. I know she's super popular with the Stalking Jack the Ripper series, but I've never read it and it wasn't really like the most intriguing for me. It's not my usual type of fantasy. But with Kingdom of the Wicked, um, since it has to kind of do with witches and demon princes from hell, that was enough to intrigue me. So I tried it out and going through the audiobook is a really good idea because the narration is done very, very well. So Kingdom of the Wicked um, takes place in Italy. I forgot honestly what time period, but it's, you know, in the past. And it has to do with these twins, Amelia and Vittoria. And they're both, you know, really, really different. Amelia is like the quiet, kind, kind of submissive girl who just loves to cook and read and wants to live a simple life. And then her twin, Vittoria, is the bold, brazen, daredevil, you know, risky, adventurous twin. And they're both witches and they've always been trained by their nonna to never um, deal with the wicked and you know the demons will come after them and never to delve into the dark arts and to always you know keep themselves safe and so the story basically starts off with um, there's a bunch of these deaths that are starting to happen to other witches in their town and um, 
Victoria ends up being the next victim and so Amelia finds her twin sister dead with her heart ripped out and she decides to take a path of vengeance to try to figure out who killed her sister and what's going on with her city and so she summons one of the seven princes from hell to help her. So none of that is spoilers, it's all given in the summary of the book, and I was intrigued by it. What I wasn't expecting is that it's a little bit more fantasy romance. I thought it was just fantasy, but there's definitely more of like that romantic element, and it almost kind of reminds me of fantasy romances that have Fae in them, except, you know, he's a demon, but it's still kind of that mysterious, brooding, immortal creature, um, you know, who happens to be shirtless all the time with tattoos. And so it's definitely giving me a little bit of like Sarah J Mass vibes, to be honest. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. And it's like just like a nice fun read. Um, and I'm about 50% through the audiobook right now. So I have a feeling that I'm going to finish it within the next couple of days. And then actually, I'm going on a kind of getaway trip with husby for five days starting this weekend. And so my plan is to bring the obelisk gate with me um, and see if I can read, you know, in the wilderness where we're going. I mean, it's not that much of a wilderness, but for me, anything that's outside of the city and outside of Wi-Fi range is <laughs> the countryside, the wild nature life out there. So I will keep you guys updated on my reading. Hey guys, I'm here to close this week's vlog. Um, so I forgot at what point I updated you guys last, but I was in the middle of reading Kingdom of the Wicked by um, Carrie Maniscalco, and I finished it and actually really enjoyed the book a lot more than I thought I was going to. Um, I think overall my rating is going to be a four stars. Um, so I really liked the beginning of the romance that we were getting with Amelia and um, Rath. And then I really enjoyed the plot. I liked the whole atmosphere of it. It was like a little bit spooky. And I, I like the fantasy elements, especially the different princes of hell that we got introduced to. Um, I think my only major complaint with this whole book was that it was told in Amelia's first person narration and her inner monologue tended to get me a little frustrated. It just, it was a lot of telling and not a lot of showing. And yeah, it was almost like she would go off on tangents. Hi, little one. Are you going to join me with my reading update? Thank you. So yeah, there was a lot of telling and not a lot of showing. So that was a little bit frustrating. Um, overall, it was like a pretty good fantasy book. I think it's pretty solid. That's why I give it four stars and I do recommend it. I am excited to read the sequel. I don't know if it's going to be a duology or a trilogy yet, but I am really excited for it. So yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, I'll probably give you guys some more in-depth thoughts about it during my wrap up, but it was pretty good. I am a little bit sad that I haven't started Obelisk Gate yet. I did kind of go off on a tangent with Kingdom of the Wicked. So I'm hoping to read Obelisk Gate when I go on my camping trip this weekend. So I'll give you guys an update on how that goes. In the meantime, bye and I'll see you guys on next week's vlog. Bye!